Welcome everyone. Today we are going to solve another problem related to shear force and bending moment diagram. This is problem number three from the chapter number six, bending from the book of mechanics of materials by R. C. Hibbler. In this problem, we are being asked to draw those diagrams for overhanging B. That's the one that is being shown in this figure. So let's solve this problem. Now for solving this problem, first of all, we should determine the reactions which are acting on this O-hanging beam. For that, let's consider the beam on which these forces are acting in order to have a free body diagram of that beam. So this is the beam where we have this point as A, this point as B and this point as C. So at A point we have a hinge support. So due to hinge support we will have two reactions. One as vertical, another would be horizontal. But if you look at this beam carefully, you can see that there is no other horizontal force is acting on this beam. So there won't be any horizontal reaction of this in support. Therefore we will have a vertical reaction and let's name that as RA. We have a roller support at B point and because of that we will have only vertical force at B point and let's name that as a RB. Other than that uh, we have a uniformly distributed load of 8 kN per meter. So this uh, uniformly distributed load can be converted to a point load by simply multiplying the total length of the beam which is 6 meter. So 8 by 6 will make it 48 and uh, now where that will act it will act exactly at the mid of the beam so here will be that point load due to the udl having magnitude of 48 kilo newton so the distance from a to the unit load would be three meter distance from a to b is given which is four meter and distance from b to c is two meter now in order to have the support reactions we need to use the conditions of equilibrium. Let's use the second condition of equilibrium that is summation of all forces acting in y direction equal to zero. We're taking upward forces as positive. So we have Ra and Rb as the upward forces and we have a negative means the downward 48 kilo newton force equal to zero. So then from here we have Ra plus Rb equal to 48. Now for calculation of RA and RB we need a third equation that will be due to the third condition of equilibrium that is summation of all moments actually equal to zero and taking all clockwise moments as positive and uh, we have to choose a point let's choose point as A so RA will not be having any movement because RA is passing through point A 48 uh, kilo newton will have a clockwise movement around point A and uh, the magnitude would be 48 by 3 the distance between a to the point where this 48 kilo newton force is acting and we will have uh, anti clockwise movement caused by this RB force so negative RB multiplied by the moment arm around point A that will be 4 meter equal to 0 so from here we will have value of RB as 48 by 3 divided by 4 so 12 and 36 so we have got uh, RB as 36 newton and since ra and rb makes 48 so it means ra should be 12 kilo newton or you can simply put the value of uh, rb here and then you can determine the value of ra okay so let's move on for the shear force diagram first and then we will move towards the bending one diagram so what we have right now we have the values of uh, ra rb and the word there at the top part of this beam, there is a UDL of magnitude 8 kilo newton per meter. The distances are also known to us. These are the points. Now let's draw a horizontal line that uh, depicts the surface of the beam. Let's name the key points A, B and C. Now here the determination of uh, the variation of shear force, in other words how the diagram of the shear force looks like will be divided into two portions. Why two portions? 
because uh, we cannot do in a one portion because there is a variability of the force here if we would have a simply su supported beam then in that case we didn't need to have the two portions i'm talking about the portion a b and b c because as soon as we move towards uh, the bc portion then we will have a reaction force and that for, for that we should have a different equation for the shear force diagram so let's uh, draw a shear force diagram by using an equation that is valid for 0 to 4 meter and let's assume a imaginary line here and which is at a distance of x from the left end so x would be 0 when we are at point a and x will be 4 when we are at point b so if you want uh, the shear force in between them then we can use this equation so this x is actually 0 to 4 meter then this equation of uh, shear force will be used now which equation let me drive it now in this portion from a till to the imaginary axis we have to take all the forces acting in this portion and when we are dealing with the shear force if it is upward then we have to take it positive and if it is downward then we have to take it negative so when we are at uh, a point we have a point load of 12 kN which is upward so we'll just write as 12 and in between uh, a to x we have a UDL and for the determination of uh, the magnitude magnitude of the UDL we need to multiply the distance and the distance in this case is x and uh, you can see UDL is acting downward so it will be negative so negative 8x now this is the equation of shear force in between a and b where the value of x is 0 to 4 now in this equation if I put the value of uh, x is equal to 0 then I will simply get the shear force as 12 similarly if i put x is equal to 4 it means up to the point b then i will get shear force as so this will give minus 20 kN. so it means when we are at point a we have positive 12 let's say up till this point we but when we are racing at point b we have negative 20 when we are putting it down then we don't need to show it I mean the negative sign we don't need to show it so in other words we can see that uh, the shear force is varying from plus 12 to minus 20 in between point A and point B like this now you, here you can see that uh, the shear force is zero at some point now if you want to know this point then again we can use this equation in this equation we'll simply put instead of shear force as zero because at this point it is zero and we keep everything else the same then we can determine the value of x so x will be 12 divided by 8 and that will be 1.5 so it means uh, when we are at uh, 1.5 meter distance away we will have a zero shear force similarly on any other distance if you want to calculate like if you want to calculate at the one meter then simply put one in this equation similarly if you want to determine uh, the shear force at two meter then simply put two in this equation and so on but this equation is valid only from zero to four now for the second portion means from 4 to 6 meters this will be the equation shear force when x is equal to 4 to 6 meters in that case we will have a equation now instead of uh, having x in between a to b we will have a x in between b to c and again that x distance is measured from point a so instead of having x we we have x here so all the forces on the left hand, left hand side we have to consider all those forces so we have ra upward and positive rb upward and positive but a udl which is downward so again the distance is x so 8 multiplied by x so ultimately we have a final equation of 48 minus 8x so in this equation if you put x is equal to 4 meter you will get shear force as plus 16 it means now the shear force is moving upward up to the point of 16 let's say over here and similarly when we reach at point uh, 
c where we will have the value of x is equal to 6 so then shear force would be so 48 minus 48 means 0 so shear at this point will be 0 so it will be a straight line so this is the final shear force diagram that was required to us now let's shift for drawing the bending moment diagram so let's draw a straight line that represent the surface of the beam and the key points on that line b a b c same as on beam now bending moment will also be determined at two key locations 0 to 4 meter and 4 to 6 meter like we did for the shear force now bending moment for the case when we have x is equal to 0 to 4 meters would be so in a similar way we will consider a line measuring line that is some x distance away from the left hand side for that what will be the bending moment so whatever forces which are on the left hand side will be considered in calculation of the bending moment so on the left hand side we have ra of 12 to newton and that will cause clockwise movement and it's positive so 12 multiply by the momentum since we are calculating the momentum at this imaginary line which is x distance away so we'll just write x the other force here is the udl uniformly distributed load which is acting downward and hence it will cause an anti-clockwise movement so negative how about uh, the magnitude of the bending moment diagram in this case it will be like a force multiplied by the distance so force which is uh, 8 multiplied by x so 8x is the force and that force will be acting at the half of the x so the distance from the force and the point where we are calculating the bending moment will be half since it's a udl so therefore x by 2 and the final equation for the bending moment from 0 to 4 meter would be 12x minus 4x square so here if you put uh, the value of x is equal to 0 then you will get the bending moment is equal to 0 since you can see the variable x is in both the terms so it will be 0 and let's say if you want to calculate uh, bending moment at 1 meter distance away from the left hand side then in that case the bending moment will be 12 minus 4 and 8 if you look at this equation carefully it's a quadratic equation it means a variation from a to one meter distance will be curvature and that curvature is a two degree curve now if you look at the shear force diagram you can see that the shear force was zero at 1.5 meter distance away it means at that point we will have maximum bending moment so when you put x is equal to 1.5 you will get the bending moment as so on solving you will get nine kilo newton meter as the bending moment so you you will move slightly above and then it will be moving down again it means here you will have the maximum bending moment which is 9 kN meter and it is a distance of 1.5 meter now how about uh, the bending moment at 4 meter distance so in that case we will just put the 4 here and putting 4 we will get minus 16 kN meter so it's sinking down and then when reaches this point becomes minus 16 if you are interested in determining the point where we have uh, zero bending moment then you simply use this equation and equate it equal to zero like 12x minus 4x square is equal to zero then you can determine the point where we will be having zero bending moment so this is a quadratic equation and uh, if you divide this whole equation by 4 it will become 3x minus x square equal to 0. So if you take x common then it will be 3 minus x equal to 0. So from here you will have two values x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. x is equal to 0 is not possible in this case but you can see x is equal to 3 is possible which is here means when you are at this distance which you are at exactly three meter distance away from the left hand side where we have bending moment zero now let's jump for the second portion where we are having x is equal to four to four to six meters so this will be the x then so now bending moment when we have x is equal to four to six then in that case what will be the bending moment so 12 will have clockwise movement and it have a moment arm of x similarly 36 will also have a clockwise movement 
but how about moment arm moment arm will be the total distance up to the a point is x and from a to b it's 4 meter so if you subtract 4 from the x you will have the moment arm in a similar way we will have uh, the bending moment due to the udl and that will be anti-clockwise because the udl is downward directed so first the force which is 8 multiplied by x where it will be acting it will be acting at a half of the x so the final equation for this will be 12x so if you simplify this then the final equation will be 48x minus 144 minus 4x square now in this equation if you put to the x value of 4 then we will get the bending moment at uh, b which we already calculated but let's see if it's moving due to the this force so if you solve it you're going to get uh, exactly the same which is minus 16 kilo newton meter it means no change the bending moment is same but how about the last point which is six meter away so in that case we'll put six so when you solve it you will going to get the bending moment is equal to zero since the variability will again be in a two degree shape but will be zero when it reaches at point c so here's how you can draw a bending moment of an overhanging beam when the loading condition is a udl so in this problem we have uh, drawn the shear force diagram and also the bending moment diagram using the basic calculations that i shown here so that's all from this video i believe you have an understanding of how this kind of problem will be solved thank you for watching this video and i hope to see you in next coming videos till then bye